Welcome back, everybody. I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert. Today, we're coming to you from the Stay and Seal Experts facility. Caleb was nice enough to take time out of his day to walk me through and show me around. Caleb, I appreciate it. Hey, Joe, I'm just so glad you could make it, man. Caleb, for the few people out there that don't know who you are, why don't you give everyone a brief brief introduction of yourself and the company? Okay. My name's Caleb Roth, uh, based out of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm the founder of Stain and Seal Experts. Uh, we're a Nashville-based service company and manufacturer of fence and deck stains. Very good. Well, for today's video, what I'd really like to do is talk about the who, what, when, where, why of Stay and Seal Experts. Okay, well, great. Let's start uh, with the who. So as you said, you guys are a manufacturer here in the Nashville area that also happens to be a service company as well. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel like that gives you more insight being a service contractor as well, more insight to exactly what you need out of a stain? Yeah, Joe. So, so I grew up in the fencing business. Uh, you know, family business, a lot like you did. Sure. And so I think that really helped me get into the staining business okay. under, and understand the ins and outs of the fence industry. Once I got into the to the staining industry, that was a plus. I felt that right off. And then when I got into manufacturing of fence index stains, I had applied thousands of gallons of them myself. And so I knew what I wanted. I knew what I was looking for. And it just it made it a lot easier, I think, than if I had, uh, you know, if I had been confined by a textbook as a as a like a college graduate chemist sure so i think that would have helped me too but i think being in the field really helped me to get exactly what i wanted the product to be yeah it gave you a lot of like a applicable experience yeah. very good um so for the what let's talk a little bit about like the manufacturing process uh, i see sometimes there's maybe some misconceptions out there in the internet that maybe you guys are simply relabeling stain mm -hmm. uh, but as you walk me through today there's a full manufacturing process yeah. going on here yeah, so so obviously we make stains right here. Um, when I, you know, I'm a marketing guy. Sure. So, so when I was doing, uh, you know, service business and was just thinking about making stains, I definitely thought about doing a private label with another company. Sure. But the truth was I couldn't find a company that I wanted to deal with. I just couldn't find the product. It didn't exist, so we had to create it. And basically there was a lot of trial and error. And, um, you know, there's no website on how to make stains. So I sure. just had to dig things up and look at it. And I just went way back and looked what they were doing in the old school days and kind of just went from there and started tweaking things till I got it exactly how I wanted. Oh, very good. Yeah, one thing I was really impressed to see is you guys take it from, from base bare ingredients, mix it, perform magic, and then mm -hmm. turn it turns into stain. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you give us a brief rundown? You know, without getting into specifics, of course, but kind of a, you know, so I, I think you told me there's some pigments and then some binders and oil. Can you kind of walk me through the 30,000 foot view of what that looks like? Yeah. So one of the things that makes us different is I'm, I'm health conscious. Sure. So I interviewed a lot of guys um, before making stain that were in the business that had been in the business for many, many years. And I started finding recurring themes and it was health conditions. It was lung cancer, yeah. diminished lung capacity brain cancer, pancreatic, kidneys, things like that. And I thought, you know, if, if I, and, uh, you know, if I'm going to make stain, I'm going to make one that's not going to kill me. And um, so, so that was strong on my mind throughout the process. And so we're pretty minimalistic. We're not going to add a ton of chemicals in our product. I would rather have a product that may not sit on the shelf for 20 years. Maybe it's only good for two or three years on the shelf. Sure. But it doesn't have all those chemicals in it that, that my guys, me personally, our customers and then the contractors that are using them on a daily basis, you know, I don't want them breathing anything that that's, you know, harmful. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, that's what kept us out of staining and sealing as a fence installer for so yeah. long is that other products in the market, when you open the top, it's almost like it just the chemical just smell just hits you in the face. And I, as I'm sitting there smelling that I knew instinctively like, this is not good for you. Like there's a reason why it smells the way it smells. And, you know, if there's one thing that we've talked a lot about is that I don't want to put my team members in situations that I wouldn't want to be in. And I certainly don't want to be in a situation where I'm worried about, you know, how long my skin is exposed to the chemical or really anything like that. So that's really what drew me to Sandstill Experts as a, as a fencing contractor is just the fact that you guys – are really focused on is this safe to be around for team members and i mean also let's let's talk about it that this is going in someone's backyard yep. you know this is going around their pets or their kids and we really have to like take that into consideration when we're thinking about what what are we bringing into these people's yards 
Yeah, certainly. It's, you know, how many times have you been on a, on a job site and, the, you know, the toddler's got their face pressed against the glass and they're just dying to get out there on it. So, so that's a big consideration. And so, sure. so the way this whole, this whole thing starts is a fence stain starts out or a deck stain starts out as with your, your ingredients. It starts out with pigments, which come in a powdered form, okay. crushed minerals, different things to make those up. And uh, you put those into a, a cutting or a grinding solution. And it takes a lot of shear. There's a there's a thing that, that just spins in circles like a saw blade. Yeah, it cuts those things up and it gets them suspended. You know, think about okay. uh, maybe an analogy that would would hit home with viewers is uh, if you had a swimming pool full of Jello. Okay. Uh, and and then you wanted to take the ball pit from McDonald's and drop all those balls down in the pool. They're just going to pile up and just spot, sit right? on top. So yeah. It takes some pretty good amount of force. To get those things broke up inside so that they're suspended in that jello and okay. that's what we're doing we're taking those pigments and we're putting them in a form so that we can suspend them so that when we can get them on the fence and even you know and distribute them evenly we take that and we and we mix it in with a sealer product product that's going to seal you know do the sealing th properties and uh, that's kind of our slurry you might call it a slurry and that goes into our base oil and it's a pretty simple process nice now what were the what were those huge are they vats or containers? Yeah. Those things were massive. Yeah, they they're, well, they're massive for us. So we started out making stain in 50-gallon batches. Okay. Now, yeah. now we've got a row of 500-gallon tanks. Um, if you go to Sherwin-Williams, they're probably making 5,000-gallon batches. Oh, wow. So uh, still small time, but it's it's a huge step for us. Yeah. And uh, it, it allows us to make 100-bucket batches. And, uh, you know, Very good. moving in the right direction. That, that was the one thing that kind of hit me when I'm when we're walking through there is it's like they get progressively larger and yeah. then and then you got the huge ones there up on the floor. Uh, it, it's kind of a neat look you've got down there. Now down in the manufacturing facility as well. So when we left the manufacturing over the dis, the distributing side, you guys have a ton of buckets down there. Yeah. How many buckets do you think are down there? Oh, I I, I couldn't tell you. There's there's a lot of buckets. We keep a lot on hand because we turn our product over fast and we have to keep a lot on hand. Sure. Uh, we buy buckets by the tractor trailer loads. Oh, wow. So we uh, 24 skids and there's, you know, the, the skids are seven foot tall, maybe eight foot tall. It's a lot of buckets, folks. Buckets. There's a lot yeah. of buckets down there. Where do you put them all? <laughs> now, one thing about the buckets, too, is I noticed uh, it seems like they're color coded. You know, you've got some orange is obviously my favorite, but you've yep, got yep. some blues and greens. What, what do the colors signify? Well, I like things to be simple. Um, so you'll notice that our fence stain has a blue lid. Our deck stain has an orange lid. Uh, some of our other, like our semi-solid colors, have a green lid. Okay. Um, chemicals, different color lids. We private label, and some of those companies have different color lids. The yellow lids. That's sure. A, you know, sure. A company out on the West Coast we make stain for. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Very good. Well, I think that covers maybe the what of stain and seal experts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about the when. So how long has stain and seal experts been making stain? Oh, it just seems like a blink of an eye, man. It's gone by so fast. But um, so we started in the staining business in 2012, okay, and uh, started manufacturing stains for resale in about 2017. Okay, all right, very good. Let's talk about the where next. So we're currently sitting just outside of Nashville. Now I know in Missouri where Ozark Fence is, we buy stain from you guys. It, are you guys a regional distributor, a regional manufacturer, or is it more of a national, international brand? Yeah, so so we're uh, you would consider us an international brand. So we distribute our stains all over the U.S. and Canada. Okay, and um, you know, de depending on where you are, there's probably a dealer close. If not, we direct ship to the consumer. Now, also, you were sharing with me before we started recording. You're also in talks with some strategic partners in other countries. Is that right? Yeah, you know, there's a need all over the world for a good, healthy product. So we're gonna look, see what we can do. Very good, very good. Well, Caleb. I really think the most important thing we can talk about is the why. What 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 drove you to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to form a company that manufactures the best stain in the market. What made you take that leap? Um, you know, Joe, I, I, I never set out to make the best stain in the market. I, basically, a long story short, my story is is the staining business was good to me and my family. And um, if I can take that knowledge and teach other people how to do the same thing, it's a fantastic thing. And, you know, education cost us a little bit of money to promote and do these events that we do. Uh, sure. That's why you're in town. That's right. And um, so if we can do that, it's a fantastic thing. And we, we just support and fund that operation by making really good products and putting them in contractors' hands. Very good. Yeah, you guys put on the Stainless Steel Experts University here recently here in Nashville. It was a two-day event where you guys gave away an incredible amount of education and knowledge for free. Yep. 
I, I still think that's incredible. You know, and in, in, in talking with Caleb, Caleb's one of these per, one of these people that you really got to pry stuff out of him. He's not gonna he's not gonna self promote. But one of the things that I love about Caleb is that he really, you know, he's the kind of guy that would that would lose sleep at night if he knew that someone didn't come because they couldn't afford the price of admission. Yeah, is that accurate? Well, you know, we have people come from. Um, I think Washington State was, you know, as about, yeah. about as far away in the continental U.S. as you could get. They come, and it costs money, and, it, and it's time away from your family. So, yeah, free sounds like a pretty good price to me. Actually, so I was actually talking to a gentleman that was – so there was a standing portion and a fencing portion. During the fencing day, I was talking to a gentleman from Hawaii. So oh, really? no, he wasn't in the continental, obviously, but, yeah, he's here from Hawaii. So we had a Hawaii guy here. How about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that was news to me, so that was great. Well, Caleb, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to bring me through the facility – I, I really enjoy going through and seeing what you guys have going on here. I know your time's important. And, and like I said, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with me and introduce yourself to, uh, to my viewers. Well, Joe, man, come back soon. I, sh I absolutely will. Guys, for now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.